Hello there and welcome to this video on the income statement or also known the profit and loss statement intended for beginners. Now in this video what we are going to do is skip boring theory and not focus on the definitions. Instead focus on real life examples mainly focusing on these five companies that you can see on this slide. Before that we will go through a very simple income statement that will hopefully make all of these lines a bit more clear then we can use that to apply to these companies. And by the end of the video, you can also do that on your own and also compare the income statements of various companies. So let's get started. The first part that's very important to mention is that just as the balance sheet has a purpose to show the financial position, the income statement has a purpose to show the financial profitability of a company. And it's a statement that is for a period of time. In this case, it is for the year ended, so for an entire year. So everything that we see here is what has happened in that year. Since public companies also uh, publish quarterly reports, you might be looking sometimes into income statements for the last three months. And keep that in mind in case you're comparing different companies to make sure that you're not comparing three months of one company versus 12 months of another one. So let's take a look at these four boxes. I've divided it into four components. I do believe that every component has something that we can analyze individually so let's start with the first one normally an income statement would start with revenue so every for-profit company will be selling certain goods or services in order to provide return for the equity holders or for the owners right now imagine that in this case this company has been selling chairs or tables or whatever it is Revenue of 100,000 means that they have sold goods that have value of 100,000. That's what they've charged their customers. That doesn't mean that they've received the cash. Normally in the accrual accounting, that is the case, which is being used by most companies. So when they make this journal entry in the system, they have credit on the revenue and debit either cash, if they receive the cash, or accounts receivable, or just known as receivable, for the portion that they have not yet received the cash. It's something that we've covered in the previous tutorial. Now the second part, cost of goods sold or the direct costs, that is basically how much it costs the company to make the products that they've sold. Now if you think about it, if a company is selling goods, then the cost would be a bit higher than if a company is selling software, right? Because there is not really a lot of tangible things involved in that. However, on the other side, and we will see that in box two, for example, the R&D is likely to be higher for software companies. If you think about Apple, they will have to innovate a lot more than a company that sells tables and chairs. So we need to keep this in mind, especially if we are comparing companies through different industries as the gross margins would be completely different and that's completely okay. So keep in mind, the gross margin shows the profitability of the product or service or the margin that has been added on top of that. So that's the first box and that's important to note. Now the second box is about the other expenses that are related to the business. So as you can see, we have selling general and administrative expenses. That could be marketing expenses there. It could be the salaries of a lot of employees that are not directly working on the product, such as accounting such as HR and a lot of others. Then we have the R&D. Now, all of these expenses, including depreciation, amortization, they are relevant. They are, they are, they, we must have them in the business in order to keep running and keep innovating, but they're not really linked to the products that we've sold. So the cost of goods sold are directly linked to the products that we've sold. The more revenue we have, the higher the number or the cost of goods sold will be. The part below is not really tied to that number. Of course, it will impact the future sales, but it's not really impacting the ones that have happened. And once we subtract these costs, these other operating expenses, we get to this operating income or loss. In this case, it's 37,000, and we get to a certain operating margin. Now, this part is very important because Managers oftentimes have their targets and their bonuses based on this part because everything that's above this line is something that they can control. They can 
Uh, they should be able to control the revenue. They should be able to sell more or reduce the costs. All right. So if you think about how do I improve the margin, you can either sell more, which would not improve the margin, but maybe improve the gross profit, or you can in increase the sale price or decrease the costs of goods sold. So find a better way to manufacture the same products or provide the same service that costs a bit less. Or if you want to improve the operating margin, you can do the same as above, but you can also decrease the costs that are mentioned below. So those would be a few ways. And that's this is one of the measures that are very important for the profitability of the business. Everything that's below is important, don't get me wrong, but it's not something that a lot of managers have power to. For example, if we take a look at the interest, income and expense, they're based on the rates that are on the market. There's nothing that they can do about it. Same with taxes. It is what it is. There is nothing that a manager can do. It would be unfair to tie a manager's performance to the taxes. I mean, it doesn't make a lot of sense. It's, it's not up to him to, to choose a percentage. It's given by the government. So moving, moving below the second box, in the third box, there are certain business expenses that oftentimes occur, but are not really unusual. So they're just normal business expenses. However, they're not dependent on the manager's performance. So that leaves us to the earnings before tax that exclude certain unusual items. Box four is something that I'd like to mention. It starts with these so-called unusual items. The purpose of these unusual items is to keep them separate because yes, they did happen, but it's not like we are going to have them every year in the future. If you take a look at the merger and restructuring changes, it happens that to a lot of companies that they decide to go into a different direction or maybe sell certain divisions or restructure. But it's not that like they're going to do that every way, like every year. So they do it once, figure the best way forward, then they move on. So yes, all of these are expenses. To some extent, it can be argued that they, are, they, they depend on the, the manager's decisions. But at one time, so it would be unfair if we take a look at this earnings before tax and we use that as a guide for the future because we are not going to have these expenses in the future. Of course, then we have the taxes, as mentioned, it's just something that um, comes out of the tax computation. That would be pretty much it. Now, if we take a look into these four components, we can compare different companies. We can take a look at their gross margins. Of course, if they're in the same industry, we can figure out which one is doing better in that area can take a look at their operating margin again, understand um, their performance in that area and so on. We will see what are some tricks that we might experience. So um, that's why hopefully the five companies that are chosen will be a good fit for this exercise. Now this is the income statement of Netflix. As you can see, all the numbers are in millions and therefore the years um, basically for the whole year ending in the dates shown above. And then LTM, if you see this abbreviation, that's the last 12 months. So what can we extract from this information? We are now quite familiar with what the revenues are, the costs of goods sold. We see the gross profit margin. Well, we can get the four boxes here as well. Now I have certain questions here, but that's something that we already covered about increasing gross margin or operating or net margin. And Basically, the trick here is that it's tough for a company to change what's below the operating margin because, as mentioned, not a lot of that depends on the company and the management. So if we take a look at the four boxes, let's start with the gross margins. We can see that Netflix has been improving its gross margin. Now, this is very normal for a company that's growing. It's a startup. It finds ways to improve, but it's also growing. Not It's, it's growing its gross margin not only by by um, adding a lot of revenue, sometimes by cutting costs. In this case, it's more likely that it's growing by, um, by the revenues, as you can see from 8.8 .8 billion to 28 billion in the last 12 months. So significant growth, but it's a starting point for analyzing a company to see how well it's doing. And based on these numbers, the change of revenues year over year, you can make certain assumptions about the future. Then we have the sale, general and administrative expenses, the R&D. So everything is included. Now the depreciation, amortization. In the case of Netflix, the main asset that they have is the content. 
and well it can be argued that that should be included in this cost of goods sold so when they amortize the asset actually they included that there so you can see content provider margin 43 44 maybe will grow to a bit higher percentage keep that in mind when we look into other companies then we have the second part which goes to the operating margins similarly um, as to the gross margin it has been growing over time we can see the operating income um, so nothing too strange there it's quite expected for a, for a successful company that has been growing and it's not a mature company so when you see growth rates of 30 percent still growing if the growth slow down to 15 10 5 percent if we see that trend we can make an assumption that it's more of a mature company but netflix is not there yet so all of this information and um, the conclusions we can derive based on the income statement then we have the third one which is um yeah certain expenses or in income that are not related to investments uh, management decision you can see the interest expense certain but you can see also that the size of this is not that significant then there is nothing really um, that's unusual you get the taxes this is how you would go through an income statement you can analyze the changes over time so going from left to right horizontal analysis or you can analyze the different uh, ratios like the margins that are within a certain year dividing one line over the other well, let's take a look at dropbox dropbox storage company um, take a look at the gross margins now we have 80 percent very large huge margins However, take a look at the operating margins. That's the box two. They had negative, so they, they've been losing money for a long time. Now they've turned positive, so in 2020, now they're at 13%. If we go back to Netflix, their operating margin was 23%, and their gross margin of 43. Dropbox has much higher gross margin, but they have a lot of expenses down here that it's, yeah, it's tough to cover with the gross margin to get to a high operating margin that's very normal again if you take a look at the percentages dropbox is also a company that has been growing it has a different business model so the costs of the goods that they sell in this case it's not really goods it's it's a service that they're selling the cost is much lower compared to netflix that has to invest heavily into content now for the rest um there isn't really a lot of special things to consider there are a few unusual items as you can see they don't repeat very often they're indeed once a year and they're not that significant let's take a look at manchester united it's a football club how do we interpret their income statement and do you notice anything different compared to the previous ones that's that's a question and you can pause the video and try to find some answers on your own and come back in a few seconds basically there are a few things the first one is that the numbers that are shown are in british pound so as you can see they're in million but it's not the same having a revenue of half a billion us dollars or british pounds then what you'll notice is that the income statement is for the year but the year ends june 13th so their financial year doesn't end december 31st which is possible every company can choose their own end of the full financial year now let's take a look into the content the gross margins are extremely high 90 percent why is that the case well let's take a look at the revenue a football club has a few sources they have the source of for example tv rights they get revenue they earn revenue from selling tv rights but there's no cost to that or there's very little cost to that so the margin would be extremely high another would be the the um, selling of merchandise yeah, well there we have some costs but selling merchandise is not the main source it's one of the source but maybe not the main one so it's not that unusual for football clubs to have high gross margins However, if we take a look at the last lines below, if we take a look at their marketing expenses, the, the general and administrative, if we take a look at the amortization of goodwill and intangible assets, which involves the depreciation or the amortization of the contracts with the football players, we see that they have, well, it's tough to have a positive operating margin. And we saw that, uh, now actually, if you analyze other football clubs, you'll notice that it's, it's really tough out there for them. 
then we have certain um, expenses like interest and investment income um, again nothing too spectacular they are important if they're significant in this case i say that's not really um, the case and we have certain unusual now in this case what you'll notice is they have gain loss on assets now it's it can be argued that it's kind of usual if they have something like this every year so i would not agree with this classification you have something that's 10 million growing to 30 million maybe it's a it's not that unusual to expect in the coming years however it's something that um, needs to be taken into account and maybe dive deeper into the annual report to understand the what is it that they're selling and what is this unusual um, sale of assets? Maybe they're complete, all of them are completely different. Then we have Amazon. Now, Amazon is one of the companies that's known for extremely low margins. Now, recently, because they're into other type of business like the Amazon Web Service and the, the cloud, and these are services that have higher margins and we can notice that into both in their gross margins improving but also their operating margin before that it was the margins were even smaller mainly because they they were reselling a lot of the products or they were providing this marketplace but the margins that the percentage that they got was extremely low now this is improving over time so it's very good to see but it's Good to keep in mind that comparing different margins um, with company when, when companies are in different industries might give us a bit of a different feeling for the company. I mean, it would be unfair to say that Amazon is a bad company because their operating margins are six percent compared to um, I don't know, let's say maybe Dropbox that has a margin of thirteen percent or Netflix that has a margin of twenty three percent. In fact, Amazon is doing extremely well. These three percent or at least six percent from three to six percent is actually a huge number of operating income. Then we have this third group that I only pay attention in case it's very significant. Now it might be argued that the interest expense is significant, but it's one billion. Take a look at the top line. Well, maybe not that significant. Of course, then we have the unusual, it's quite good very low amounts except for the last two years so i think it fits into that definition so if at some point you are wondering uh, about certain changes for example how do we have such large growth or how does this margin improved so significantly all you need to do is open the, one of the annual reports so for example if you're wondering about this 39 percent change then take a look at the 2020 annual report. If you're wondering at this one, then check the latest report. It can be annual, it can be quarterly. But basically, in the annual report, there's a lot of explanation about around these numbers. So for example, what you might see about the revenues is the revenue division based on their operating segment, based on geography. Um, so a lot of a lot of information that, that is useful for anyone who analyzes a company. Let's take a look at Coca-Cola. Beverage company, right? Mainly that's what it's known for. It sells all, all, all kinds of beverages. Take a look at the margins. I mean, stable gross margin. Here it seems that there's a huge drop in revenue. If you wonder why that, why that is, I would say take one of these reports in 2017 is one where there was a huge drop. You'll get your answer. If you take a look at the gross margin, it's quite stable over time. So that shows a company that can maintain its, its performance over time. It, that's very good. Then we have the operating margins growing over time. And if we think about what has changed here is, okay, we know that the, op the gross margin is exactly the same. So it has to be some improvement in the second box. So let's take a look at that. Take a look at the selling general and administrative expenses. They went from 15.4 billion to 11 billion. So one of the ways that Coca-Cola decided to improve its margin is to cut this type of expenses. And you can analyze all kinds of companies like this. If you take a look at the last few years, you take a look at the different lines and see what significant 
that would um, over the in in the long run you'll benefit a lot from that kind of experience and subsequently we have increase in the, in the operating margin then this third box is something that in this case it might be worth taking a look at the income or loss on equity investments as coca-cola has quite some of them but then take a look into this last part how unusual is it i mean merger and restructuring changes every single year in the last five years if i'm looking into the future of coca-cola i'm going to forecast this i'm not going to use the numbers that are above the unusual items i'm not going to use this one no i'll take this one into account i don't think this is unusual it's in fact it's something that i'm expecting to occur in the next years it seems more likely that they're going to have that than not so you can think of certain some of these lines and question whether that makes sense don't blindly trust on everything so maybe some of the things that especially if in the future you're going to forecast the future well just keep this in mind so that would be actually something that i find strange but feel free to pause the video maybe you find something else strange and if you do feel free to comment in the section below there are a few things that we need to keep in mind when analyzing companies of course the first one is the industry as already something that we've seen some industries have higher margins it is what it is the product or the service costs less to deliver to be delivered be created and delivered that's normal so if don't compare gross margins of two companies and make a decision that one is better that make a conclusion that would not be correct then we have the life cycle if you take a look at startup companies it's very normal for them to grow fast but to be losing money that's been the case also with amazon and tesla and apple and all of these large companies it's absolutely normal then something that we mentioned the financial year end date we have the currency so both are very important then we have the restructuring so something that we notice and that can impact a lot of things actually if there is a restructuring and a company sells some a division that's been 50 percent of what the company's actually been doing then it could be that the revenues will fall in half in the next year and that's okay it's not that something has happened negatively it's just a major restructuring we might see that also as an unusual item that's fine just keep questioning is that the case or is it something that will carry on in the future years and then of course we have certain external events such as COVID-19 and we have plenty of other crises in the past that well could impact the um, profitability of the business now if you want to get better at understanding income statements there are of course few things that you can do and that is work on all of this content on your own get a get an income statement of a company that you like or you're a fan of or maybe a football club or any kind of anything that makes you well anything that interests you let's put it that way if you take a look at a certain income statement and you take a look at the different ratios so from top to bottom that's the type of analysis it's called vertical analysis so the gross margin the operating margin the net margin you'll get a bit of a feeling of its profitability and then you can take a look at how it changes over time so are they doing better than the last year are they selling more are they selling less are they improving in certain areas or maybe not and then you can compare that with other companies but here you have to be careful that they're in the same industry and i've noted a few examples here because again if you're comparing the margins of companies in different industries it would be tough to make a conclusion that is actually rational that would be all regarding this video if you have any questions or comments please let me know in the comment section below i'll see you in the next one